Hey everyone, real quick video on the update here for my Hornet 2. What I wanted to show you was um, I made some of these little uh, shock eyelets and shock collars here for the rear. You can see that I did use some of the nylon yellow. I think these are the short CVA shocks or 80 millimeter from uh, eyelet to eyelet. Well, the Super Hornet has uh, Stadium Blitzer rear shocks which have a longer eyelet. So I made this here in red because this one here, which is the factory one, isn't going to fit. The Stadium Blitzer or the Super Hornet one is black, so that's also not going to work. So I made these. But more importantly, I wanted to show you the sprue that it comes on. Um, I did do a video a little while back about how to remove certain parts from a sprue. This is a lot more self-explanatory here. The reason I do this, and I did want to show you this example again, because it's a little bit different color, um, different uh, procedure here to kind of take them apart because they're not nearly as uh, tight as the previous ones. This is done so that parts don't get lost. Oftentimes, um, these are printed in a basically a big bed of nylon, and certain areas are, are soldered or melted together, which is this selective laser sintering here. So when it's all said and done to get these out, you stick your hand in the sand and you pull out parts. Shapeways is really good about making sure that you get all your parts, but sometimes things get left behind. So this methodology here you pay a little bit extra because you get this, you know, this sprue here that gets broken off anyway. The thing is, you also don't get any kind of dye lines. In this case here, you can see the inside is white right there because the dye never made it to that area as it was stuck right here. However, that's on the inside of the collar. You're never going to see that again. Previously, I'd have to make like a little sprue coming off of here and it just kind of annoyed me. Also on these, because these are designed to slip through the shock shaft right here, I had to put a little, little boss right there. So I'm going to remove that, get my cutting tool here. I'm going to snip, these are just some flush cutters. If you don't have any, you must buy some, they're dirt cheap. Okay, that's snipped out, get that out of there, and this will slide straight out. Okay. Now there is going to be residual nylon in here, so I'm going to get a little tiny flathead screwdriver. And if I talk slow enough, there you go, I can find it. And I'm going to just kind of get in here and just kind of scrape the nylon out. And you can see this powder here. This is just the leftover powder from the bed of nylon it was sitting on initially. And that is, I'm just going to clean it out just a tiny bit in here. Okay, you can kind of see down some of the powder that's coming off. Okay, clean this out. Once you've cleaned it, you know, you want to give it a good washing. Uh, if you're going to, let's say, maybe clear coat it or, or, or paint it or something like that. Now, just because this is red, you are going to see the white inside. If this was just white, you, you wouldn't see any difference at all. It would look exactly the same. Now, the thing is, I'm using these for the rear shocks. So, uh, you know, shocks are never perfect. I wouldn't recommend these in a color normally because shock oil is going to get on there and get stuck to it. So what I'm going to do is give it a couple of coats of clear coat over it. I think I'll probably use maybe three or four coats of uh, enamel. No, I'm sorry, not enamel, lacquer clear coat. And this stuff absorbs paint like you wouldn't believe it. And that's going to prevent that oil from you know, marring the surface. Now, I did want to show you this piece here. It seems to be kind of stuck. See, that's just kind of sitting there, just give it a little twist and it'll come right off. Okay, same kind of deal. It's just full and full of a uh, leftover nylon. Same basic principle, we'll snip this. Snip that. Piece comes out of the middle and pull that out here. We'll, put, we'll clean that a little bit later. On these, these just go straight through the eyelets. So we'll just break this thing. You can kind of see here, this is super Wow, holy cow, can I really twist that? Wow, I'm kind of surprised by that, look at that. So this this laser-centered nylon, I mean, look at that. Let's try and fold it. Jeez. So let's just kind of keep trying to get this thing to break there. Finally, kind of fold it almost 90 degrees on top of itself. More than that, actually, almost 180. Look at that thing. There you go. Okay, so you can see how strong this SLS stuff is. And there are the eyelets. 
Okay, and like I mentioned before, I'm going to go ahead and give these a clear coat before I install them. I just want to give you another example of uh, those of you who have never purchased some Shapeways or have purchased them and wondered why the heck I did this. That's, that's another reason for it. I went ahead and painted these with a semi-gloss transparent paint. The reason I went with semi-gloss is typically gloss can be a little, uh, have a little bit um, of a sticky surface when you would put this into the collar. And, you know, since these will be removed at some point, I didn't want them to just get bonded. I used the lacquer because lacquer normally requires many, many coats. These have got about three or four coats. And to get that real nice lacquered finish, it probably might take upwards of 20. All I wanted to do here again was just to seal these. I wanted to make sure that if the shocks leaked, they didn't permanently mar these. These are ready to install. Now, again, although I'm showing you on the Super Hornet, a lot of these fundamentals are going to work when it comes to a lot of 3D printed parts. I did clean these out and I was very surprised to see that there was almost no support material left in here. I did tap these with an M3 by, one, uh, by 0.5 tap because these shock shafts are M3 by, by 0.5. Normally, if I were just to tap in a self-tapping screw, I would just go ahead and do that. After, of course, make sure the hole's been cleaned. But because these shock shafts will have to be hand-threaded in here, I wanted to make sure that it was easy for these to bite. Otherwise, I could risk scratching or damaging the surface with pliers. You know what's awesome about the Super Hornet? Is I can pull these off without taking the wheels off. That is very cool. Okay, let's pull these off here now. That's pretty long. Okay, so that's been removed. And much like the original Super Hornet, we're gonna put the eyelid on first here. And because I did tap this, this is gonna go on very swiftly here. If you're worried about these backing out, uh, thread lock works exactly the same way on these. I am gonna actually just hold these just a little tiny bit just while I torque these down a tad. Thread lock will work on the 3D printed material as well. So that is that. We can go ahead and put the collar on. I'm sorry, the collar of the spring, then the collar is gonna go on. Or I fling it off into nothingness. Let's put the collar back on there. Press that over the shaft. Okay, that's in. And we will go ahead and install this sucker like so. There it is. I just wanted to make sure that anybody, and this is regardless of if you're using items that I've created or somebody else's, or hopefully, you know, things that you've created, that there, there's a certain way to install items that have been printed using this selective laser sintering. Uh, there's a number of other, uh, uh, materials that can be used for printing. When it comes to structural components, uh, excuse my thumb, I know it's a little bit multicolored. I've been painting all day. You can see the pink and the purple. Yeah. Doing a very custom Hornet body here, so hence the multicolor thumb. Again, sorry about the little interruption there. Um, if you are going to use a structural uh, a printed material it's going to be SLS at least you know right now in September of 2016 this is your best bet it's very durable maybe September of 2017 they've printed something else ridiculously strong and that's uh, that'd be great too if you have any questions please post um, I can I can definitely help and answer any way I possibly can as you know I'm a massive fan of 3d printing and I certainly hope that you are too thank you for watching please subscribe like the video apparently liking does something I have no idea um, I'm also on Instagram and Facebook you can see the links at the end of the video and please check out the band blue pinto they are awesome they're the ones that uh, allow me to use all their songs for these videos Again, a link is at the end of this video. Thank you so much. See you next time.